Old Testament. And the New Testament is more a picture of sin. For you see, leprosy started very small and under the surface. Initially, it was insidious. Initially, it was insidious. But then it would quickly spread and devour. It would begin to eat your fingers, your nose, parts of your body. That is how sin starts. It starts small, but before. So if you are you are done leprosy, you will be isolated because it was contagious. The rule was that every leper, even when he's coming close to people, he would go shouting, unclean, 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 that people may run away. So they were isolated, the lepers. And if they come in the village, they will be stoned. That is how dangerous leprosy was. In our story today, we see a leper coming to the city, risking his life, knowing that the punishment will be death, knowing that it's contagious, but he comes to the village, he comes to the city. Reason being, he desperately needed change. He heard that Jesus was in the village and he didn't care. He broke the rules and went to that village that he may meet Jesus, where they were uncontaminated people. The same is true for you and me. We have something that is eating us. We have lost our sensitivity. And like this leper, we know God can. That God is able to save us. God is able to help us. God is able to deliver us. The question is not if God can. The question is, like this leper, is he willing? The leper came to Jesus and he said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. That is always the question. We know God can heal us. We know God is able to give us that job. We know God is able to do that restoration. But many of us, we doubt. Is he willing to do it for me? We know God is, we don't doubt his ability. Without his faithfulness. I know God can do it for other people. Will he do it for me? That is how this leper came. But I thank God that when he heard that Jesus was available, he did not waste time. He went for his healing, he went for his salvation, he went for his deliverance. Paul says, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2, Paul says, This is the day of salvation. Now is the time for your salvation. There is an urgency to your deliverance, to your, to your healing. For you to receive that which God wants to do in your life, you must treat it with immediacy. You must treat it with urgency. When the Bible says this is the day for salvation, now is the time for salvation, it is not just eternally being born again for eternity, but also presently. That God wants to save you from whatever is holding you back. Yes, He wants to save you from hell by being born again, but he wants to save him from that disease, from that shame, from that failure. Would you come like this leper today? 
regardless of whatever risk you may be involved. Are you willing to come? Because if you come, He will save you. He will deliver you. He will intervene in your situation. In verse 13, we are told of our lady. Then He put out His hand and touched Him. He put out His hand and touched Him. This is a man who has not been touched for many years, for a long time. He has never been touched. But when he came to Jesus, the Lord touched him. We know that Jesus healed many people by a word. Let your eyes be opened. Lazarus, come forth. Be healed. Jesus did miracles by the word. But this time, he touched him. He touched the untouchable. Society didn't want anything to do with this man. Isolated him. But when he was brought to Jesus, the Lord touched him. And that is our Jesus. When everybody else is looking away from you, when everyone else is feeling disgusted by your behavior, by your failure, by your mistakes, by your mess, he's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. He's a compassionate God. People may judge you, not the Lord. People may be mad with you, not the Lord. He loves you with an, an everlasting love. He wants to show you his grace and his masses. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30, Ephesians 4 30, the Bible says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God. How do you grieve the Holy Spirit? It's when you don't believe in the grace, in the forgiveness, in the masses of Jesus Christ. When you don't receive, believe in the acceptance of Christ. So he's never mad at you. May be mad about you, but not mad at you. About you because you have refused to believe that he died for you. Amen. You have refused to believe that he loves you and cares for you. Amen. But if today, like the prodigal son, you can decide, I'm going home. Like this leper, I'm approaching Jesus. You will be shocked. Amen? Amen. So others are irritated by you, others are putting you away because of your flaws, because of your sin. The Lord is willing to embrace you. The Lord is ready to welcome you. Then we are told in verse 13, Jesus touched him and then said, Be thou clean, be cleansed. He commanded. He was speaking not to the leprosy. He was speaking to the leper. Not to the leprosy, he was speaking to the leper. Be thou clean, be clean. That is, that is the command of Jesus. He didn't say go to a rehabilitation center. He didn't say go for a counseling session. He didn't say go to a seminar of deliverance from leprosy. No, no, no. He gave a decree. Declare. He commanded. Let me say to you, God's commandments are God's enablement. I repeat again, God's commandments are God's enablement. Every time God issues a decree, a command, with that command is the power to break whatever bondage. When God gives you a command, that command, that word of God carries with it the power, the enablement, the empowerment for you to be healed, for you to be saved, for you to be set free. So if you are praying, Lord, set me free from addiction. Lord, set me free from pornography. Lord, set me free from this illicit bad friendship. If that is your prayer, like the leper, that God have mercy on me, heal me from this wickedness, from this sin, from this shame, then the Lord is saying, be thou clean, Amen. be thou free. Hallelujah. Amen. He's giving a decree, a command, and it is for you to take that command from Jesus today Hello. and go free Amen. and go saved. 
gives a command with it carries the enablement. Jesus would find people like Lazarus. But when he said, come forth, that word carried power to break the chains of death. So whatever habit is affecting you, whatever pollution is in your life, the Lord is saying to you today, be blessed, be thou clean. Verse 14. Verse 14 says, And he charged him to tell Noah, Jesus blessed him, then say to this man, Tell Noah, don't spread it. Don't tell anybody. And every time Jesus did a miracle in the Bible, in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he would tell people, don't tell anyone. Yet, people will go tell everybody. <clears throat> don't tell anybody, they go tell everybody. Then when Jesus is going to heaven, he says to the church, go tell everybody. We are telling nobody. Hello. Praise the Lord. Amen. He said, go preach the gospel to everybody. Go tell, go tell, tell those students, your classmates. Go tell your colleagues, go tell your neighbors, your friends, that Jesus died for their sins. That they can be forgiven, they can be free. But you're telling nobody. That is the irony. They went and told everybody. Why Jesus didn't want it spread is because when he came here on earth, his primary purpose was not to work wonders. The primary purpose of Jesus on earth was not to heal, to resurrect people, or to cleanse the lepers. His primary purpose was to save sinners. Amen. Amen. Likewise, in our lives, I pray that you can borrow a leaf from Jesus. That when miracles happen, when good things happen in our lives, like Jesus, we will not seek to promote ourselves. We will not blow our trumpet. You know, we will not post on Facebook, social media, people to know. You no, know, just people to know and to, to, to make a name for ourselves. Jesus has a way, had, had a way of working, had a way of working when he was, he was here on earth. And every time he did those great and big things, helping people, healing the sick, the Bible says people glorified the Father. They never glorified Jesus. They glorified the Father. And he said to us, in Matthew chapter 5 verse 16, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Why is it that today, when good things happen, the glory comes to us? We are busy promoting self. Let me say this. In our lives, in our church, in our achievements, the main thing is to keep the main thing as the main thing. The main thing must be to keep the main thing as the main thing. And the main thing is Jesus. The main thing is Jesus. I, I noticed as I was checking for the junior youth lesson we are doing after this service, John 1 to 5. I noticed in John chapter 3, verse 16, a very common verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I noticed that the middle word of that common popular verse, the middle word is son. There are 12 words and 12 words. In the middle, you have the word son. Jesus must take the center of our lives. Hello. Jesus must take the central part of our lives. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2, I determined to know anything, nothing from him except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. He said, when I came preaching, when I came doing the miracles I did, my determination was Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It wasn't about me. It's called humility. It's dangerous. It's dangerous for you to take the glory. It's dangerous for you to try 
promote your image or promote yourself. There is one, one man who did that. His name is King Hezekiah in the Bible. He was sick. He cried to God. God healed him and added him 15 more years. The moment he was healed, other nations came to congratulate him. The leaders, the emissaries from the neighborhood, they came congratulating him. Part of that, that group were from Babylon, sent by King Nebuchadnezzar. So they came to congratulate him for getting well. Bible says he took them around to show them his riches, his achievements. So he took them to the temple, they saw the gold, they saw the silver, took them around his palace, they saw his wealth. When they went back home, they told King Nebuchadnezzar. And King Nebuchadnezzar decided, we are attacking that nation. We must take all those riches and we must take those people as captive to our country. That is how Hezekiah died eventually. And Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, the entire, all the young people, they went as captives in Babylon. Because of parading himself, because of show off, show off, show off, it's dangerous. It will take you to captivity. It will mess, it will mess, it will mess up with you. We must, like Jesus, who is our model, who is our example, we must demonstrate humility. The only time Jesus spoke about himself, the only time he spoke about, the only time he gave his autobiography was in Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. He said, for I am meek and lowly. That's the only time he said about himself. I am meek and I am lowly. That is Jesus. And if we are Christians, followers of Christ, I pray that we shall show humility and meekness. First Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and He shall lift you up in due time. Humble yourself. In the Bible, you go down if you want to go up. In the world, calculations, if you want to go up, Lift yourself. Elbow as many people as you can so that you can stay in front. Not the Bible. Way. You go down if you want to go up. Can I hear an amen? So, verse 14. Then he said, verse 14, go show yourself to the priest. He then said, go show yourself to the priest. Why? Why to the priest? For two things. Number one, confirmation. That now you are healed. Don't be quick to spread it. Please confirm first. Be sure. Be sure. Go to the priest for confirmation that truly you are healed. That truly you have it. That truly you are blessed. So, for confirmation, number one. Number two, for evangelization. Number two, for evangelization. In the Old Testament, he says there in verse 14, Go to the priest and make an offering for your blessing as a testimony to them, just as Moses commanded. In Leviticus 14, Moses commanded that if a leper is cleansed, he will go to the priest and make sacrifices and confirm with the priest. Now, the, that is 1500 years ago. 1500 years ago, Moses gave a command. The principles of a healed leper. Leviticus 14. In those 15 years, after it was written as a law, not even one was healed for 1500 years. Not even one. Only one person who was healed. But he was not an Israelite. He was a Syrian. Nama, if you remember. In 2 Kings chapter 5. So Nama couldn't go to the temple. The rule was, if you are healed of leprosy, you go to the temple and you show yourself to the priest. This is a gentile, he couldn't go to the temple. So no leper was healed in the history of Israel. 
yet it was written, yet it was a law, which is also a lesson to us that when God says something, it can take forever, but one day it will come to us. Amen. One day it will come to us. So Jesus was the first one to heal a leper. So it was an evangelization to the priest. Because the priest have never seen somebody healed. Yet they read it in the scriptures of leprosy. Mm. But now it was an evangelization, a, 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 a testimony to them. That there is somebody in town who is doing that which was written by Moses 1500 years ago. And that would make some of them believe in this Jesus Christ. We are mistaken many times when we think that Jesus only cares for, for, for the priests, for the prostitutes, sorry, the drug addicts, but he doesn't care for religious people. Here Jesus is saying, go show yourself, not to the prostitutes, or the drug addicts, go show yourself to religious people, the priests. Because Jesus came for everybody. He came for the priests. He came for, for the prostitutes. Amen. He came for everyone. He came for the scribes, the religious, but also he came for the sinners. He came for the Pharisees. He came for the fools. So don't just think Jesus is interested in those who are, don't go to church. Even those who come to church, the Lord came for them. And he wants to save all. Amen. Glory to God. In John chapter 4, he went to Samaria to meet a woman who had five husbands. And now she was living with a sixth one. An adulterous, an immoral woman. Jesus went for her. But that is John chapter 4. Before going to that adulterous woman, she went to a religious leader, a chief rabbi. His name was Nicodemus in John chapter 3. Hallelujah. So he came for both Samaritan woman and religious leaders like Nicodemus. Verse 15. But so much the more went their fame abroad of him and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. I mentioned that. He said, don't tell anybody. They go telling everyone. Verse 16 and 17. After that miracle happened, we are told Jesus withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. Now, a crowd was pulling up because after that miracle, a crowd was happening. Instead of Jesus parting, he went to pray. He withdrew from the crowd, went to a solitary place in the wilderness to pray. Because to Jesus, prayer was a priority. To Jesus, prayer was always a priority. I picked the next verse, although it, was, it is not part of the, the story of Jesus cleansing the leper, but I, I picked verse 17. Look at verse 17. Now it happened on a certain day, as he was teaching that this one, there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by, who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The power of God was present to heal them. God has said in his word that he gives gifts of healing. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 9. He has given nine gifts. Part of those nine gifts, one of them is the gifts of healing. Why is it we are, we are no longer seeing that operation. We are not seeing healing in the church today. Why is it we as believers, we are not operating that we can't, Jesus said we shall lay hands on the sick, they shall be healed. How come? Let's go back to our verse, verse 17 again. The power of God was present to heal them. Before verse 17 is verse 16. You have no 17 though 16. 16 says, before the power was present to heal, Jesus went into the wilderness to pray. It is always like that. Prayer precedes power. Prayer precedes power. 
A prayerful Christian is a powerful Christian. A prayerless Christian is always a powerless Christian. If we will walk in the power of God, if we will walk in the glory, if we will walk in the manifestation of the blessings of God, if we are going to be of any help to our society, like Jesus, we must learn to withdraw. Withdraw from TV, withdraw from our phones, withdraw from sleep, to have time in prayer. He went to pray, the next verse says, the power of